add on to the, the anecdotal part of the story that I mentioned earlier, um, speaking of feeding and you know restoring the gut. So this was uh, several years ago that I got this story, but from a, from a mom who lived in Santa Ana, low income neighborhood, she called me because her best friend um, was Spanish speaking. And so she, she called to relay the story to me and um, the Spanish speaking mom, single mom of four kids, you know, low income had a child uh, who, when he was nine years old, he had mental health issues and uh, she told the school and they didn't do anything about it. And then one day they called her and said, you need to pull your son out of school. He just threatened to blow the school up with a bomb and kill everybody in it. And she said, well, I told you that he has mental health issues and I need help. So they sent him to a, I never know, is it a psychologist or a psychiatrist? The one that can administer drugs. Psychiatrist. A psychiatrist, thank you. So they sent him to a psychiatrist with the mom, and the psychiatrist said, okay, here's your prescription after, you know, reviewing the child. And the mother said, well, that's it? What, you know, what, what about, like, what's causing this and the side effects? And, like, he's just going to take this drug for the rest of his life? And he said, well, have you considered what's in the food? It, like, what are, you, what are you feeding him? And she said, I don't like, you know, chips and burritos and hot dogs and pizza, like whatever I can get into him, you know, like he's like, he's a very picky eater, like whatever he'll, whatever he'll eat. And so he said, well, you can either consider the toxins, like the food dyes and the chemicals and all of that that's in the food, or you can give him this prescription. Like you can either go organic or give him this prescription. And so she went organic. She found a way to buy rice and beans on a very limited budget. And within two weeks, one of the teachers at the school called her and said, we don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Cause this is a completely new child. Wow. And at the time of the call, she said, he is now, I don't remember what it was 16 or 17 years old, but he's of the age where he's just about could go out and get a gun and shoot up the school. And she called me cause it was like a week after a recent shooting. I'm not sure which one there's been so many of them. Um, and she said, I just want you to know that I'm clear that my son will not get a gun and shoot kids at his school because we went organic and we took the toxins, toxins out of a diet. But if I had not done that, you know, and, and organizations like yours were not sharing about, you know, GMOs and toxins and all these other groups were not sharing about it. You know, I think he would have done that. And, and, you know, hundreds of kids' lives would have been affected. Thousands of people would have been affected. And so she just really wanted me to know that uh, her son was healthy now and responsible. And he was even helping to start school gardens at his, at his school. Yeah, he works on community gardens. They grow food for the schools. I mean, it's it was it's like just like a such a heartwarming story, you know. And so when I talk about, um, you know, eating organic and, and looking at the toxins in the food supply, I really mean it when I say that this can alter lives forever. It can, this kid has a new future because his mom's found out about the food, what's going on in the food supply. And, and everybody at his school has a new future because of that, right? Like they That's so good. have a very different future. So, I mean, as a doctor or scientist, what else can we do to, to get the, you know, parents and maybe other doctors or, you know, somebody, the government to support, you know, testing for nutrients and, and raising awareness about this issue. I mean, we're, you know, what else can we do here? I, I can chime in with one local anecdote here and then we can hear from you, Stephanie. Is locally, there was a group here that started organic foods in our local schools in my county. And they had this one school that wasn't performing well. They put an organic garden in. They had chefs, local chefs come in and cook with the kids. The kids were chef ambassadors. They had a beautiful garden there. And the program was a smashing success. They, uh, UCSF um, came in to study the program and within one month, of instituting this new garden, a change in the food, attendance went up, improved uh, improved attendance rates, it's increased in absenteeism, behavior and visits to the principal's office went down. This was a primary school. This group took this program to a lower income area, even more lower income, and um, where the kids were eating two to three meals a day at school. Oh. And again, one month in, great success. Kids are loving these lunches. Who stopped it in that school? The union, the school, uh, the food union felt threatened by loss of jobs and they stopped the program. Even wow. though the workers in the kitchen of this food union, uh, their own children were in the program. Wow. So we have a political piece to work out as well. But no doubt these conversations, we hope, inspire parents to get involved at the local community level 